So the E3 Nintendo Direct that I saw was pretty good overall. They pretty much just gave a non-stop stream of games that people wanted to see. They started off opening with a uh, Smash Bros. reveal that which involved the Dragon Quest characters, the hero, which is the dumbest name ever. I'm pretty sure he's he's called a Luminary apparently, and the other characters. One of them looks like Goku because apparently that joke won't ever fucking die. There's that, and then there's the other stuff that they they immediately follow that transition into the Dragon Quest XI Definitive S. There's which is a bunch of really weird subtitles. I don't quite understand it. They joked with Bowser and the whole you know last name thing. That was that was a little fun, uh, quirky bit. But then we got you know other stuff like Luigi's Mansion Two, which had a bunch of really cool, really weird gimmicks. They're going back to the more exp exploration based uh, design of the first game, and they had a bunch. The Poltergust is going to be involving the Gooigi stuff, which is already sounding gross to say. It's going to have the uh, pretty much Luigi's grab from Smash Ultimate, where he just pulls on the plunger and sucks, him, sucks it up. It pretty much resembles the melee attack, which you can also do to Ghost when he sucks him up. And the closest thing to Portrait Ghosts are back. They're I think they're called Character Ghosts. The one thing that I saw the next game after that Dark Crystal that I'm not sure about that. It's XCOM Fire Emblem kind of game. So maybe I might check that one out, but I haven't even seen the original or the one that's going to come out on Netflix soon. I don't know. Maybe if I'm interested. The other one, the next game after that, Link's Awakening. That one looks cute as heck. I wanted to play that one uh, so much. I haven't even gotten to the original. I'm going to do that soon, but it is... The art, art style is fa fantastic. I love the fact that even though the 2D Zeldas have stayed on their handheld consoles, we're bringing it back to uh, their console in like a really stylized version so that you know there's still a bit of identity to this one and the original. And you know, not everything needs to look a hyper realistic Twilight Princess kind of stuff, even though everyone really gets on the case when it comes to the more cutesy, artsy stuff like they did with Wind Waker back then. But I think this is fine. The I hope the game is as good as I've heard because the original is apparently one of the best ever. Easily one of the best on the GB, the or Game Boy Color because that one has the color dungeon, which isn't this one. So that's something interesting for me to look forward to. And then the next one after that that they showed off was a The Trials of Mana, uh, which is a continuation of the Mana series. That one, that one was interesting because the third one, uh, what was it called? I don't remember the exact name of it, but the third one never came out of Japan. It's coming here, and it's, we're also getting the Final Fantasy Adventure, which is the first one, and the Secret of Mana, which is the SNES one, which is also really, really uh, one of the best RPGs on that system, apparently. Um, that's on the backlog also because I haven't gotten to it yet. But it costs 40 bucks on the eShop, which they're, they're, they're old games. And also, if Switch Online didn't just have NES and had the SNES and Game Boy and all the other older games, that we would just be paying for, for the unreleased one previously outside. So, yeah... 40 bucks, I don't know about that. It, it just doesn't seem too exciting. But was exciting? Witcher. Witcher 3, that. A game I didn't... I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff about people wanting that game on because it's such a, it's such one of the biggest games, open world ones. And apparently it's good. I'm anticipating it to have a massive graphic downgrade at least... Enough so that the frame rate doesn't go to utter hell. Like that, I can see easily being one of the biggest things that keeps this game from being one of the best versions of this game. Because Breath of the Wild did not... That one got a bit unstable with the frame rate at times. So a game like Witcher is probably going to struggle a bit. But who knows? It might be better than what I'm thinking it might be. Uh, I guess next would be the... Resident Evil games, which I'm not, 
I've never get, gotten into Resident Evil yet. I've been planning to. Four especially. Uh, five and six, That's th those are interesting choices to put on the Switch because uh, six fucking sucks. It's just garbage overall as a game. I, it's the the really action focused one that just did not it it was just horrible wasn't it because I heard so many horrible things about it the graphics look pretty bleh the gameplay is the gunplay is apparently just okay but there's no horror in it the whole point of Resident Evil is that it's horror and seven brought it back because that's that's the return of form and five is it's five I don't know about five because that one. I remember the co-op AI is noticeably uh, horrible. I I do remember that. So maybe this one is better. I don't I don't know. That's wishful thinking for me on that that game. I don't know much about it beyond that, but I do know that the AI was one of the most infamous things I heard about it. Then we get no more heroes is coming back with Travis looking like his his old self, a little scar on one of his eyes. And I didn't get to play in the first two. It's another couple of games I've been meaning to get to but that the, when he said Henshin I immediately thought oh my god is that beautiful Joe because Henshin a go-go and all that but like I'm really really excited because I didn't hear good things about uh, Travis Strikes Back it's it wasn't that uh, critically received or apparently sold well and apparently some I heard that that game was gonna be indicative if they would continue the series but I'm so, I'm so happy to see that it's coming back. And put Travis in Smash. He deserves to be in Smash Bros. He would fit in so well. Just fighting alongside the the other characters like Bayonetta or Snake. He'd be so good. Up next was Contra. I mean, Contra is Contra. I haven't gotten to those either because apparently they're super freaking hard. But, you know, it's cool. And I like the, we the really weird wacky stuff that they're doing with it. A panda? An alien? Like that... That's some fun sounding stuff. I bet it could be a lot of fun with like friends. Uh, hopefully it'll over news more interesting Contra and series and the other Konami series because they've been bringing back a few of them for, with like Bobberman R when the Switch launched and they're getting Snake in Ultimate. That's so you know maybe things are doing better at Konami. I don't know, but it's it's wishful wishful thinking overall. Damon X Machina that one I have been. Paying a t close attention to that one just because it's something I've never really thought about when it first showed up last year because that opened the ET Direct last year. And it looked really weird and whatever, but then I played the, the special missions demo. That's essentially what it is. And I've, I've grown to like it a bit. You know, it's, it's that basically Gundam hack and slash from what I've seen. A lot of customizable weapons and upgrades, and I, it might be something that I'm paying attention to. The other one, Astro Chain, which is the platinum one, that also has been catching my attention. These two games are very, like one has a very, Damon has the red color, uh, kind of uh, coating. Astro Chain looks more bluish. So, comparing and contrasting, there might be two very similar games, and I could see like a, f a massive fan base overlap between those two games. Uh, crossing over, I would love to see like mix and match designs of the Damon X Machina and Astral Chain's characters and robot designs. That would be like sick, sick looking. I bet that's that it exists already out there somewhere. Like that, but just a bunch of fan art of that stuff. I'd love to see that. And there's a new Panzer Dragoon, which I know nothing about. But when I saw the logo, I was like holy shit, they're bringing this back. Like, it's that one is a super expensive game. Saga, which was on the Saturn, one of the best games on the Saturn. It is something I'm thinking about. I'm looking into that one because that, for whatever reason, Panzer Dragoon just sounds interesting to me. It's even though I never played much rail shooters, but this one has my attention just because it's new and prolific, but it fell to the wayside. But I'd love to see if it's something I can get into at some point. Then there's Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm sure you've seen the Scottish, Scottish Pokemon trainer. <laughs> that was that, that was fun. And okay, this one I want to talk a little bit about because of the whole Pokedex thing. The National Dex is not coming back. 
So it's only going to be the ones that are in the Gala region. Not everything's coming back, and everyone is having a bunch of like really strong opinions on this. It's very divisive. I get that there's a reason for that. The people said it's there's so much with the battle animations and the character designs. It's so much, and on the Switch, it might not be enough. But I would counter, at least in this one context, as saying X and Y had every single Pokemon in that game running perfectly fine. Lag mostly when most multiple characters showed up. And I get that because, you know, this one has giant sized Poke Battles and a bunch of other expansive features that the series has gotten over the years that it might be a bit too difficult. But as far as the decks, if they can make it like Black 2 and White 2 where they had so many Pokemon from other gens fill out the rest of the Pokedex with the new ones, I think it might at least be good enough of a Pokedex because... Looking at the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon Pokedex that comes out to include the legendaries, a whopping 403 Pokemon, which is insanely, it, that is an insane amount. So I can anticipate this one cutting out any legendaries because we don't need more of those. We, have, we really don't need more of those and what with the whole... Uh, Ultra Beasts thing, like the Ultra Beasts pad out a lot of the Sun and Moon uh, editions. I think as long as we get like a decent sized number of new Pokemon, we got like less than 100 for the last two Pokedexes. I assume this one probably like most generous, maybe 90 Pokemon added to this one. I think it could be good. And then I'll just like where. We are at how many Pokemon at this point? We are currently 800 deep. So if they had like to add half that or even 500, but not the full list, because cutting out legendaries as is, that's already a bunch, a bunch of extra space that can go to other Pokemon that could be added. I think it'd be fine. I do think because of the, they added so much in the D 3DS X and Y games that it's not so much, it's impossible. It would just take so much more time. I would delay the games by a lot in order to get all that running and to get running smoothly on this on this console. So I think it's disappointing, a bit frustrating, but understandable. And if they wanted to include as much as possible because we don't know what how much how many Pokemon are in the Galar decks I think it will be at least fine as long as we don't have to deal with more gen 1 oversaturation because let's go no just no the next one that I saw you know Cadence of Hyrule I never played Crypto the Neko Dancer it, it's a basically a rhythm based uh, Metroidvania kind of game I guess and you know the remix tunes in the Cadence trailer is so, sounds like a fucking banger. I love it. I love that sound. That heavy metal guitar mixed with the regular Legend of Zelda theme. That's great. And you can uh, play as Link and Zelda. I'm hoping that Zelda is a lot more like magic based, so we can finally see her more utilize the the magic powers that she's been known to have throughout the series, and actually use them in different ways than just the 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 Nehru Din Lenehu that kind of stuff because. We need a lot more like magic in Legend of Zelda instead of just to always playing as Link and swords and bows and that stuff. And I think how the warriors could probably be like a good example of how to use other types of fighting with like water, bugs, and that stuff. But yeah, it's really interesting that they're letting any developers have a hold of their properties. And then there's Mario and Sonic. You know they're. Mario and Sonic, I'm not expecting much other than that. At least Mario has gone from being a sponsored game to now being the mascot of the next upcoming games, which is, well, upcoming official real-life games. That's something. I didn't think that. And it's weird. The J the Japanese icon for the new, new Olympics is a 
a character that's Italian from Brooklyn, apparently. I don't I still know how that works. And then there's Animal Crossing. It's just looking to have a bunch of cool new additions. We it's basically you can decorate the whole island. The island is your house that you're making over. And that is pretty cool. I saw the new additions that you, you can pave new roads, they so you don't have to just make like tiles on the floor and place them. You there's you can jump over rivers. You can uproot entire trees like that. It's just a chill game. I've played uh, New Leaf for a while. That overtook like 10 months, and then I just stopped, and I haven't gone back to it, and I don't want to because then I'd go play it for another 10 months. But it's being released March 2020 because it's such a, I wouldn't say a, a big or extensive game, but it needs a lot of polish in order to get everything finished and I'm gonna guess it's gonna have some online connectivity which I mean switch online is already not that great so here's hoping it improves maybe this time this game is gonna get servers pray fingers crossed to whatever god you you call upon to ask for better fucking online service with this system Nintendo needs to get its act together on that front at least and there's just a bunch of big real games. Spyro Reignited. That one. That one I am super excited for. Never played the original trilogy. L played the GameCube ones. Kind of hit and miss, I'll admit. But I've I played the Insane trilogy. That's great. And I feel like Toys Before Bob, the developers of Insane and Reignited, I feel like they're going to do a great, great job. I think they already did. But I never really paid that much attention to that. To that released on the other systems because the just the sound of it having to download the rest of it online is just a big turnoff. Hopefully with the switch not being so you know powerful is they won't need to uh, make it as high fidelity so that it can still run at a good 60 frames but also have it all fit into one cartridge rather than what happened to the other systems. So that's the one thing. Then there's others like and Nino Kuni, which I heard uh, good things about. It looks like a Ghibli film turned into an RPG, which uh, it sounds interesting, but not necessarily something I might be into. And I guess like, there's just a bunch of games in this highlight reel. Some of the more notable games I've been looking at, My Friend Pedro, which is just a weird, weird looking and weird sounding kind of game that I might be you know, get a kick out of Doom. I am getting. I want Doom. That game is incredible. And the other one, what was it? Uh, crap, it's off the tip of my tongue. It was shown. Wolfenstein. Yeah, Wolfenstein Youngblood. I also want to get that one. That one sounds sounds super fun. A uh, new Colossus. What was that? That was the new one that came on the Switch a few years ago. I didn't get to that one, but I want I want these two games. Doom. And God, God damn it, I already forgot. Wolfenstein, yes, those two. Those two KS games. That, those are the ones that I want to get to and get to play. Because there's just a whole bunch of other stuff from the PlayStation and, and Xbox that I want to get to. I do have an Xbox, but that it's, it's, it's an Xbox. I would not p choose to play that over the other consoles. It just does not sound that good to me. Uh, no offense to Xbox owners. I'm, I'm sorry. And then there's Super Mario Maker 2, but... You know, the online. I'm just uh, going to keep my eyes peeled for that one in case that situation gets any better. And then the big one. The big one. Banjo. Fucking Banjo and Kazooie in Smash. Come on. That's just fucking incredible. It's hype. I've not played Banjo-Kazooie. I am going to. Before they come out, I am going to play and 100% Kazooie and Tui because I want to know what it's like to enjoy those characters. I have seen the reactions. I have seen the hype. I have seen the tweets, the articles, all of it. I've seen the heartwarming fan art. Like, that is some... Man, these are not just characters. They mean... They mean a lot to people. These are people's childhoods. And to see them in the modern day with... Really, really cool new 3D models and the, the hill, Gwenty, all that stuff. It looks fantastic. It makes me want to play this, play these games for the first time because it looks so cool. And you know, the trailer fake out was awesome. I can't believe that they reused the K reveal. Eh, 
and I I knew the moment I saw, the moment I saw that they were in the treehouse and they were looking out the window, it was going to be another fake out. And to see so many people actually fall for it, come on, you knew, you knew it was going to be that again. And I guess the way it ends, the sequel to Breath of the Wild, I'm sold. I'm sold and I want it. I do hope it fixes a lot of stuff that's wrong with Breath of the Wild. I mean, there's a there's a weapon degradation, but you can't rebuild or buy new weapons. You constantly have to find them. Which, I mean, come on. If you're going to make it so that you have to get new equipment, at least be make it so that it's convenient for you to get more or to make it yourself. I mean, you have a cooking mechanic. Why not use the tools? You've got bundles of wood. You've got metals. you got ore. You can just do a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of stuff when it comes to crafting, and you didn't use that to your advantage to make a, you know, a weapon crafting system. They're doing it at Animal Crossing, apparently, that which is, you know, they're getting on that stuff. Animal Crossing is more Minecraft than this. It's going to be a lot darker. That, that's really cool. Hopefully, there's a lot more character development with the side characters. The champions got nothing. They got nothing, and they had to get a, a DLC, an underwhelming DLC at that, in order to flesh them out more. It just, like, it needs more actual story. And I get that a lot of it is meant to be passive, but make it so that if you do want to go for the story, it's a great story, immersive. It really drives you in, into your head how much this means to the people that still live in this world. And Zelda, I mean, I did, I still have trouble listening to Zelda's new voice. It just sounds like the most British thing I've ever heard. Royalty British thing. I. It's going to take some getting used to. And I'm not saying that the VA did a bad job. She did okay. But hopefully she really is allowed to be a, a bit more expressive and have more range. Give her some more true emotional beats. Let her show off her lively personality some more. Because that's more, that's more stuff that I want to see. Not as many side quests, hopefully, and the side quests actually do mean something and are tangible. Because the short shrines, yeah, they're annoying because just how simple and quick they are. And the 100%ing, oh my god, the 100%ing is miserable. Do not go after those fucking Korok seats if you've tried. Do not. And I hope, there's, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to do another thing like that similar to here. But with any luck, it won't be as tedious. Or at the very least, it'll be... Fun, even if you're in on the the joke, which is a little pile of shit. And the side quest. That one, there's this one side quest in Kakariko Village, where one character is a former member of the Giga clan, and they get their own, like, special, like, it's not really a cutscene, but it's a sort of sequence, where you actually, they're actually having more involvement. And that's, that's cool. It's, it was the closest thing to like those those quests in uh, Majora's Mask where all, the characters feel a lot more lively. They have more life to them. And it feels a lot more involved because the characters have their own little stories to tell. And that, that side quest, it's short. It's not that hard. It's The fight itself that you have with that is quick and painless. But it, it actually gets to you because that is character. That's motive. And that's more of what I want to see. And with the game that's darker, and it's probably going to have a lot more to do with his characters now that, you know, we've had two years to get feedback from the fans and the players and the critics and the reviews and all that stuff. That's stuff I want to see. And I hope they really do go all in on that. The dungeons, we need, we need bigger, more expansive dungeons. Because the short shrines, they're fine for what they are, but they could be so much better if they really took these interesting concepts that they took for a... Uh, one-time thing and they really expand it because those the ability to slow down time with your arrows the ability to fly all these It's just the parrying the swords the sword fighting all the the shield surfing all that stuff so, sounds like It's ripe for massive dungeons that let you Traverse traverse the puzzles in very different ways and solve them in unique different options just like in the breath of the wild but this time with so much more uh, attention to detail probably just hone in on those things and you could have a really fucking fantastic uh, open world game that just put, even puts Breath of the Wild to shame because Breath of the Wild is not the end all be all of open world games even though it is really great and really fun it just needs a bit more 
to develop and I hope they can do that and that's pretty much the E3 direct that I saw it was it was honestly the best part about it was the way it was structured it began and ended with a smash teaser and then after the second smash teaser a, a wham a basically a wham mini trailer you got so many little tiny details in those two those two trailers you got the hero from one of the biggest JRPGs in Japan. You got you got a character that's so heavily beloved in the West. The first 100% Western created character make it into Smash by that. A sequel to one of the biggest releases uh, Nintendo's ever had. Then you follow it up with the introduction of Bowser through a funny skit, leading him into introducing uh, first party titles. Then we go into some of the third party, some of the indies. They had a whole we even very conveniently made it so that Animal Crossing, when it's revealed, you gave a very careful notice to alert fans. This is going to be delayed. We hope you're patient. And most most of the fans I've seen online have been very accepting of the fact that it's going to be delayed. And I just like the way that it was paced. Everything about it felt like coordinated, timed, all meant to get people hyped. Just about every genre was covered in this in this direct you got teasers you got trailers you got gameplay you got just about anything and everything ports remasters oh surprising a little final fantasy although we are getting eight remastered which i i was laughing when i saw that seven nine ten what and uh, the others they were getting ported to switch but not not eight and i know there's weird complicated reasons for that but eight eight th that one that one I'm interested in just because it's a seemingly rare game and I honestly hope to God that I get to see more of it. Hopefully I get to actually play it on my hands and see is this really underrated as like a lot of fans seem to say they there are some diehard under fans of this game and I want to play that one. Just the whole E3 Direct was one of the best and I am happy that for the first time in a long time Nintendo has given an E3 Direct that actually feels uh, substantial and gives fans of multiple different series, multiple different sections, what they want. And they're not just saying, oh, we'll get to this eventually and then just show it to the side. Because Yoshi's Craft the World did not even make an appearance last year at E3. So to see that also Bayonetta, on that point, Bayonetta 3 didn't get any appearance, but I'm pretty sure it's still a bit early in development to really do much with enough to create like a trailer or something I bet at least having one of the developers talk about it would have been nice but even still I am happy with what we got I am happy with the trailer and I do hope that this means that you know the switch actually finally has more original games on it and less uh, ports even though they are great ports we do need more original games to outnumber the ports and that the ports are, are basically a uh, filler in between all the big releases and I am I am I am almost 100% for sure going to play through uh, Pokemon. Maybe on the on my channel because I have we, I have been meaning to do like let's plays and stuff, but I don't have a proper setup. But even still, I'm excited for this year and next year. I am gonna be hyped. And of course, there's also Cyberpunk 2077 with Keanu Reeves and. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, which is never going to happen. That game is never going to happen. It's never coming out. Accept it. You know it. You know what's not happening.